Tonight, General Manager Colleen O'Brien and our Director of Integrated Resources, Jane Parento, will talk about RMLD's new bill format, responsive communications campaign. So I'm going to give the program over to them and uh, we'll take your calls after the presentation. Thank you, good evening. Thank you for joining us here at RMLD. Recently, the RMLD performed a cost of service study to look at the cost of production and allocation of these costs across all of its rate classes. By law, the RMLD must recover its production costs and can make up to 8% of its net plant as a not-for-profit enterprise. The RMLD presented a six-year budget plan during its recent budget approval process. This me methodology allows for proper operational and financial planning. The RMLD has budgeted for less than an 8% return, averaging between 4.2% and 7% to cover its production costs, its operational costs, payment liabilities, including payment of lieu taxes to the towns, and return on investment payments. The cost of service study recommended a 1.3% increase on operational costs. This is an average across all rate classes. This puts, puts the estimated rate of return for fiscal year 2015 at approximately 6%. As well, a recommendation for unbundling of its bill to align with industry standards, which separates out by line item power supply costs from operational costs. This allows the customer to clearly see what the fuel cost is, what the transmission and capacity costs are, and all of the other costs by line item. All power supply costs are a pass-through. What this means is that RMLD cannot make its return as a not-for-profit on power supply or any portion of the power supply. It is RMLD's intention now that a formal cost of service study has been performed to perform an annual cost of service modeling analysis to ensure that our six-year projections stay on track. The six-year projections do show nominal increases on operational costs. I will now turn the presentation over to Jane Parento, who will expand on which line items are power supply and which line items are operational in the new unbundled bill format. In addition, she will speak to the new low income rate and the change in the prompt payment discount. Jane. Thank you, Colleen. Um, over here we have a blown up size of our residential uh, sample bill. Uh, the structure of the bill is, uh, as a template, is similar to what you currently received, and I will go over the line items. Uh, the customer charge is the first line item, and that remains unchanged. For a residential customer, it's $3.73. This line is reflective of the cost of uh, the meter as well as the expense associated with processing and developing a monthly bill. Along that line, the RMLD has developed a residential low income rate. What this rate does, it el eliminates the uh, customer charge, which is $3.73 for qualified customers. In order to qualify for uh, the low income rate, um, you must, uh, you must, uh, excuse me, um, you must qualify for the Low Income Energy Assistance Program, or LIHEAP. Uh, RMLD has developed a low income application, which will be online and you can request, and it um, will uh, denote what the qualifications are for the low income rate. The second line item is the distribution energy charge. As a result of the cost of service study, RMLD is unbundling power supply cost. A portion of the capacity and transmission cost was embedded in the base rate charge. That has been removed and the new title will be the distribution energy charge. Um, this is a smaller amount um, and it is part of the, um, the, the, the current residential rate. Uh, the two components on the bill for the residential, the customer charge and the distribution energy charge, are the two components which are eligible for a prompt payment discount. As a result of the power supply being removed from the distribution energy charge, that amount has decreased. So in order to achieve a balanced approach for our customers, we have increased the prompt payment discount from 10% to 15%. 
Um, and this is a result of the um, distribution energy charge being a smaller number. The overall net increase, as Colleen had mentioned, is an increase of approximately 1.3% for all customer classes, depending on your class as well as your uh, usage amount. The next item on the bill is the um, energy conservation charge. This remains unchanged. This charge funds all of RMLD's conservation programs, such as appliance rebates, residential audits, tier one services, as well as all our commercial rebates. Um, currently, the RMLD uh, recovers approximately $700,000, and all those funds get expended to those, the conservation programs. The next uh, line item is the fuel charge. Again, this remains unchanged. This uh, cost recovers uh, the energy costs associated with RMLD's power supply contracts uh, related to fuel. Um, as Colleen had noted, RMLD does not make any costs, uh, uh, any profit on the fuel charge. It is a pass-through to our customers. Um, and in order to stabilize our customers' rates, uh, RMLD currently has a policy where that charge will not increase in any consecutive month more than 0.005 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, it fluctuates monthly and, is, uh, and, is, um, and it goes up and down along with the, with the market. The next line item is the purchase power capacity and transmission charge. Uh, this as well is a, is a pass through. Uh, it's the power supply costs associated with capacity and transmission um, that the RMLD is required to uh, carry as a result of being members of the ISO New England um, market. The NIPA credit, um, this, is a, uh, this remains unchanged. This credit is received only by residential, cre uh, residential customers. It reflects the benefit of low cost hydropower from the New York Power Authority. And this credit is also uh, calculated on a monthly basis. So Jane, let me ask you, can you just tell our customers which line items are operational? in which line items will be categorized as power supply pass-through? Certainly. The, po the power supply portion of the bill that are passed through are the fuel charge as well as the purchase power capacity and transmission. The operational components of, uh, of the bill are the customer charge and the distribution energy charge. Thank you. Do you want to go on to the... Um, if we want to step over to the commercial so we can, we can denote the change in the commercial bill with the new format. Um, along with the customer charge and the distribution energy charge, commercial customers are charged a commercial demand charge. The demand charge is a component uh, which is measured in kilowatts versus kilowatt hours, which is the energy component. And this measures the rate of energy used by electrical equipment during a given period of time. Um, the energy conservation charge is, the, is identical to the residential bill. Uh, as well as the fuel charge and the purchase power capacity and transmission. Uh, those are all per kilowatt hour charges and they are uniform across all rate classes. Uh, on the commercial bill, we have a sales tax component uh, and this is um, a component which uh, is applicable to commercial customers based on certain criteria by the Massachusetts Department of Revenue. Um, commercial customers, as I mentioned, do not receive the NIPA credit that is only for our residential customers. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jane, um, what about the demand that goes with the commercial bills? What is that? Yep, the demand component, as I, as I had mentioned earlier, it's a measured in uh, kil kilowatts versus kilowatt hours. The demand component is a measure of the rate of energy uh, used in electrical equipment at any given one time. Uh, RMLD's demand component is calculated based on the highest 15 minute usage for our commercial customers. Okay. Um, Colleen, did you want to talk about the uh, responsive communications sure. campaign? Sure. Um, any other questions on the bill format? Um, the, these formats are not yet on the website. Uh, the IT department is working on loading them onto the website. Since these, this new bill format and the, um, the increase will be effective July 1st, the RMLD employees are working round the clock to make this happen. So you can look at the website and there'll be an explanation of each of the things that Jane's gone through probably by July 1st? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So by July 1st, everything should be up on the website. Um, okay. I do have some more questions about the bills, but I thought that I would let you do both presentations and then we would uh, put the number up for the call-ins for people who want to call in. Or um, I think we could have call-ins now on the okay. bills. All right. Um, the call-in number that we have at RMLD is 781-942-6416. So if anyone would like to call in about the bills, please feel free to do so. I'll put the number up here. Down. Thank you. Again, that's seven eight one nine four two six four one six. And while we're waiting for your calls, I'll ask a couple more questions. Sure. Okay. Let's see. Jane, you talked a little bit about the low income credit. Uh, what is the criteria? What do you mean by LIHEAP? Is that the same as fuel assistance? Um, sure. There's, there's mean uh, tested programs that would qualify for the LIHEAP program. Uh, those are listed on the application that the RMLD has developed. Um, some of those uh, for our audience would be anyone who was on fuel assistance. Uh, if they were receiving food stamps, they would qualify for this program, as well as school breakfast program or veteran service benefits, just to name a few. Um, as I had mentioned, uh, the RMLD has an application. That as well will be online, as well as available through our customer service specialists. Um, and if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer those for you. One other quick question about that is, how often will a customer need to report uh, on his financial status? Uh, we anticipate that on an annual basis, we'll require proof of uh, cer certification that customers remain qualified for the, for the various mean test programs. Okay. Um, what portions of the bill do you expect to rise in the next three or four years, and why? Um, power, supply, power supply is definitely going to be going up, in, in particular the purchase power capacity and transmission component. Um, in New England, uh, the region is operated by the Independent System Operator, or ISO New England. As a re result of that, their goal is to maintain the reliability of the system given uh, plant retirements, growth of uh, sales, and kilowatt demand. Um, as, uh, as of today, they're forecasting in the 2016, 2017, 2018 period, uh, the cost of capacity is going to be um, not sufficient to meet the demand um, and maintain a reliable standard. Um, so uh, they've created a capacity market, and currently those, those costs that the, the RMLD is required to recover come in around $3 per kilowatt month. Um, in, this, in the 17-18 time frame, that rate is going to go to $15 per kilowatt month. So there'll be a five-time increase. Um, so uh, the RMLD is working diligently to, de to develop programs which will help us manage our peak demand. Um, that's the driving factor for both capacity and transmission. Capacity is driven on an annual summertime basis, and transmission is driven on monthly peak demands. Good answer. Jane, that increases for just Reading or all of? Yeah, all, all, of, all of the utilities that are serviced in the Northeast Massachusetts region. Um, the ISO refers to this as the NEMA load zone. Uh, Boston and the, and the surrounding communities uh, will be affected by this. So uh, because there's an insufficient amount of generation located in this region, uh, they've, uh, and there's a retirement of units such as Salem Harbor, uh, they have requested that additional generation be available to meet the demand. And so all utilities that are located in this area, uh, whether they be municipalities or privately owned utilities, will be exposed to those increased costs. So as you mentioned before, we don't have control over that. That is something we have absolutely no control over. So do you expect that any of our, the only um, costs, the only line items on the bills are the operational costs that we can control? Correct? Correct. Uh, you know, the, the department is trying to develop programs that we can try to manage a portion of that, uh, but the ISO New England sets the market rules and uh, we are required to uh, uh, oblige by those market rules. Okay, so we have control over those. Do you anticipate a further increase on the operational in the next few years? I, as I have stated before, with the six-year plan, there will be nominal increases going forward. Okay. And uh, those are reflected in the six-year plan on the budget. 
And how can we keep those costs down? Um, how can we expect to increase sales of electricity? Uh, one of the potential ways for, uh, for us as a utility to be able to, to control some of those costs is if we um, have a growth uh, or an economic develop with new businesses coming into our service territory. Um, the utility is a very uh, high fixed cost industry where we have to recover the cost of our capital. Um, so if we have more kilowatt hours to spread that over, um, that would avoid larger rate increases in, in the future. Um, in addition to that, technology plays a factor in terms of increasing our, our kilowatt hours. Um, there's been a lot of talk about electric cars coming in. Um, those tend to charge at night versus during the day. Um, at night, the cost of power is a lot less expensive than it is during our on-peak period. Um, so as a result of that, that would be ideal for the, for the light department as a system to increase our sales um, and keep our costs down low. Which leads to the uh, time of use rate. Can you talk a little bit about that? Be happy to. Uh, the time of use is an energy rate uh, program that is based, uh, based bases the uh, rate of electricity on the time of day. Uh, the RMLD currently has a residential time of use rate as well as a commercial time of use rate. Uh, this rate looks at on-peak and off-peak periods. Uh, that being off-peak periods being from 7 p.m. to noon, uh, Mondays through uh, Friday, as well as all weekends and holidays. The on-peak period thus is um, Monday through Friday uh, from noon to 7 p.m. The on-peak rate is a higher rate uh, and it encourages customers to uh, perform uh, functions that utilize large amounts of energy, such as drying your clothes, running your dehumidifier, running swimming pools or um, dishwashers. If customers are able to take that usage and do those during the off-peak periods, um, they will benefit by being on the residential time of use. Uh, currently, historically, the customers who are on RMLD's time of use on the residential side save anywhere from 10 to 15% uh, when compared to the residential R rate. Great. Is that available to commercial customers also? It is. Okay. Um, let's see if we have some more. Pipe Would, pipe one. You have one? Go ahead. No. You oh, want to okay. ask for the pipe? Um, does the, the ISO New England, you were talking about the independent system operator who, who oversees everything, do they have enough electricity for New England this summer? Uh, this summer they're currently forecasting a sufficient amount of capacity. Um, as with any condition, that can change depending on what happens to the fleet of generators or any transmission, uh, large transmission line. Should uh, New England suffer the loss of a large nuclear power plant or a, a large nuclear generator, or for that matter, a major transmission line, uh, that could affect the availability of capacity uh, during the summer period. Okay, so with the emphasis on reducing energy usage and conservation, which we have spread to our customers for many years now, why are the rates increasing if people are actually really trying to conserve? Um, Probably some of the things that you've already said. Correct. Uh, the, the, the wonderful thing about conservation is you have control. Uh, the light department only charges you for the amount of power that you are using. Uh, so if you're able to implement conservation me methods and reduce the amount of kilowatt hours that you're purchasing, uh, you, you, you receive a lower bill than had you consumed that energy. Okay, so um, a lot of the things that we do here at RMLD is we're connected to the community and we make ourselves available for questions that might pop up. And um, belonging to um, Rotary, we have four um, RMLD staff that belong to the Rotaries in each town and also we belong to the Chamber of Commerce in Wilmington and also in Reading and North Reading. And one of the uh, nice things about that is we, we can get questions directly from our customers. So North Reading in particular, but it's affecting um, all our service territory towns, is um, facing a proposed uh, gas pipeline that's running through their towns or on their borders. So Colleen, what is the uh, RMLD's take on the pipeline? Um, well, it's, uh, I can share a little bit, I mean, uh, how it affects your electricity rates. The generators that produce electricity from natural gas actually set the spot market price for electricity, okay? 
So if um, adding gas transmission and capacity, as Jane mentioned, because there's a deficiency or a lack of capacity in, in transmission of gas in this general area, if that's driving the price cost of electricity up, any type of addition of capacity and transmission and gas would, would affect the basis price of gas. Um, that's really all I can add. Um, it's, uh, you know, you just have to, um, you know, look at what's being proposed and, and um, how much capacity is being added. I can't really give you a number as to how it's going to impact it from, from what I've read. It's just bringing general capacity to the area for its customers. So um, that's about all I can share. But in general, uh, the charges that Jane are talking about, albeit much larger transmission and capacity, you know, that deficiency is what will be driving up the cost as the, um, the ISO New England starts to charge everyone in the NEMA zone Boston to help pay for those capacity and transmission uh, upgrades. Thank you. Um, please, if you have any questions, any further questions that we haven't covered yet, uh, you can call us at 781-942-461, uh, I'm sorry, 6416. The number's right here. Um, so if no more questions, we'll talk about our um, responsive sure. communications program. Okay. Um, the RMLD uh, is uh, introducing what's called the new responsive communications campaign. And what does that mean? What it means is that the RMLD would like to be able to communicate to its customers important information about the electric system in a prompt manner. So we're, uh, Priscilla's working hard to um, send out a bunch of uh, information in the newspaper. It's in our website. It's going to be in the in brief where we're looking for ways to contact our customer, whether it's through texting or email. The types of information that we want to be able to provide and have the ability to provide in the future is outages, outages in your area. What's the status of them? What's the restoration um, estimate time? In addition to that, as Jane mentioned, the ISO New England grid operator also has, uh, who monitors the electric grid for all of New England, they have operating procedures in which they would send out notifications to Reading Light and all the other utilities in the state if the generation uh, is not sufficient in the area. As Jane mentioned, if, if, if uh, there's sufficient capacity, but then one of the nuclear plants, like a reactor coolant pump, were to shut down, uh, they may call for a uh, mandated public appeal. That would be a type of prompt notification where the, the cumulative reduction or relief in the usage would prevent the ISO from possibly going to the next operating procedure. Their operating procedures are uh, power caution, power watch, power warning, then you could go to a voltage reduction, and then ultimately uh, a rolling blackout. But um, in all of my years, uh, I've, it's never really gone past uh, the power caution, and we're hoping even with the shutdown of Salem Harbor uh, that it will never get to that. Uh, we want to be able to communicate to our customers to get that appeal. Uh, if we were to get that mandate. In addition to that, uh, as Jane mentioned, we also uh, want to look at our peak. Now, as, as Jane mentioned, the peak has a premium associated with it. Um, the peak, uh, I'll give you the definition of it, uh, is the RMLD's system's highest 15 minutes. Okay, and what we're putting in the in brief says we have monthly peaks and an annual peak. The independent system operator of New England charges a capacity premium for RMLD's annual peak, typically reached during the summer months. The ISO also charges RMLD for transmission premiums of the utility's monthly peak. These premiums are production costs and reflected in the rates. So having the ability to uh, send out a communication that says that we're looking for peak shaving, uh, we may be able to lower those costs. Right now, if we were to bring down during our peak, and typically Jane's group can kind of estimate with working with the ISO when the peak is going to be, which is typically after three consecutive days of 90 degree weather, that morning. So we could send out a notice that says, if you help to lower the peak during the hours of two to six, uh, one megawatt of reduction equals $37,000. Next year, one megawatt is going to be Close to $70,000. Close to 
In addition to appealing to our customers through texting and emails, uh, we also are working with Tangent and other uh, companies where we're working with our commercials uh, for behind the fence generation where they will help uh, turn on their own generators to help shave the peak. Uh, these savings will, you know, are spread across all of the rate classes and it helps to keep uh, RMLD's rates lower and stable. In addition to these appeals, uh, I also want to tell you that our responsive communication aligns with our new motto of get greener, um, go paperless, and be efficient. So with that, uh, we are looking at heading towards doing our in-brief and possibly the annual report in other bulk uh, paper uh, wirelessly, electronically. So again, this is why we're looking for your email uh, for those uh, types of communications as well to save and help the environment. Uh, you can find uh, the responsive communication survey to fill out on our website, or you can come to our lobby where there's a kiosk and you can sign up for whether you want texting, emails, and what type of notifications you might be interested in. And just to add to what Colleen has to say, um, from uh, June 15th to September 15th, we're actually having a um, little sweepstakes to uh, sign up for paperless billing and also for auto pay. Um, and, and if you sign up for both, you double your chances of winning an iPod Nano. So between June 15th and September 15th, please uh, go to our website and sign up for our responsive communications request. Anything else? Nope. Well, we don't have too many phone calls coming in. Well, then and maybe we did a great job yeah, explaining and nobody, it. Nobody had to ask any questions. Well, so if there's any, I mean, once uh, our customers have had an opportunity to watch this program, if they have any questions, you can feel free to call our customer service specialists, uh, and they can uh, help provide you the answers that you, uh, that you need. Right. And our number, our uh, main number is area code 781-944-1340. So thank you for joining us. And please call us or email us at customerservice at rmld.com or visit us at rmld.com for updates on our programs and services. We will keep you posted about further programming. And thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.